Alright, there they are. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Pleasure to have you all. You know, this is not a press conference that Jacob and I wanted to have. It is a press conference that we are having of necessity. First from the top, let me give some breaking news. John Barsa, many of you know that name, the administrator of USAID will resign because of all of this tomorrow, close of business. We're very proud to have engineered that result. I think it's something long overdue. Now, you all, as you all know, our friend Merritt has accused us of some pretty bizarre and false charges, uh, one of which is the ridiculous charge of kidnapping, uh, which, as you might guess, is nuts. Now, I don't want to, I have given, Jacob has given me full license to discuss these details, and he will fill you in later, but one of the things you have to remember, one of the things you have to remember is that morning, uh, not to mention several times on Monday. Now, again, I don't want to, I'll let Jacob fill you in. That's the last thing in the world I would ever want to discuss. But there you have it. Now, on to some very important news. Merritt, when she was at Project 1599 headquarters on Monday, received three very important calls that we knew of. Number one was from United States Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Now, I was somewhat surprised. I, I was somewhat surprised by this. As, as many of you know in the press, uh, Mike is very proud of his watch collection. This is something he's prized for many years. What you may not know, and Merritt has told us, and Pompeo was pressuring her not to bring out in the press, that's why he was nervous about all of this, he received not one but two gold watches. Again, that we know of, one from the government of Russia, one from the government of Vietnam, which of course violates numerous U.S. laws, but the story gets better. On Monday, Merritt also received a call from Congressman Elliot Engel, the current chair of House International Relations, the House Foreign Affairs Committee. As it turns out, Mr. Engel was issuing threats against Merritt because, and we have learned, Merritt told the truth on her security clearance forms and admitted to using ecstasy. Engel was calling her, holding this over her head and using it as a threat on Monday, as if this story could get any crazier. The third call was from a gentleman by the name of James Bacon, a name I don't know, maybe you know it. It's, he is either State Department personnel or White House personnel. Uh, he was the person that uh, engineered the firing, and I think around 3 or 4 o'clock or something like that, uh, the White House took action, and I believe it was the Office of the Chief of Staff that eventually fired uh, Merritt for the tweets that she had sent. Now, I want to tell you something else. Merritt Corrigan was effectively a mole that we had implanted in the United States Department of State. Jacob had met her and nurtured this relationship for the last six months. Merritt was a person that we had nurtured, and it was our plan all along because we are dissatisfied with policy at state and dissatisfied mostly with policy at USAID to blow her out in this fashion, fashion to cause a disruption in the functioning of USAID. Now, here's what you may not know. We have numerous other moles planted throughout the deep state. And if you've listened to my show and Jacob's show, you know very well, we believe the greatest threat to the American people, the greatest enemy of the American people is not Russia, it's not China, it's not even Al-Qaeda, it's not terrorism, it's not any of those things, it's not Iraq, it's not Iran. It is the deep state, the United States government, our own bureaucracy is the greatest threat to the American people. That's why Project 1599 has taken direct action to plant moles in the government. And at some point, we will activate them, just as we've activated Merritt, and Merritt tweeted, and others will tweet, and we will disrupt the functioning of the deep state. We believe this might be the only way to save our democracy. Uh, so I would say this, if you're, a, if you're a deep stater, if you're a deep state bureaucrat in charge, and you have a beautiful girl in your office, 
Look over your shoulder and think twice because you'll know where she came from. All right, without further ado, I give it now to my partner here at Project 1599, Jacob Wool. Well, thanks, Jack. And as Jack just laid out, we have a number of details that we're going to dispositively prove without any doubt that no kidnapping took place here. Miss Corrigan was not kidnapped. She came here, in fact, under her own volition. She picked me up from my current residence around the corner and came here to Project 1599. She was in control of her phone the entire day. And there's a question over the genesis of this entire kidnapping story. And we have now learned, and I'm proud to announce, Miss Corrigan gave me a call last night. We spoke for over two hours. We spoke again this morning on the phone for over an hour, an hour and 10 minutes. And on that call, which was legally recorded, Miss Corrigan admitted that, in fact, a gentleman, some of you may know, others may not, named Rahim Kassam, in fact, came up with this entire story of kidnapping and drugging and tying up and all the rest. Rahim Kassam came up with this, and Merritt Corrigan said as much on the phone multiple times in a legally recorded conversation, and I'm here to announce today that that conversation will be used as evidence in future litigation against Rahim Kassam. What he did is truly shameful in inventing this kidnapping narrative, in spreading it around to the media, in attempting to spread it around to right-wing figures. And many of you in the media know that this story is nonsense because, of course, you spoke to Ms. Corrigan throughout Monday. You spoke to her. Daniel Lippmann at Politico spoke to Ms. Corrigan. Will Sommer at the Daily Beast spoke to Ms. Corrigan. Zach Patrizzo at the Daily Dot spoke to Ms. Corrigan all throughout Monday. She also spoke to numerous people at both the State Department, USAID, and the White House. She spoke to James Bacon. She spoke to Elliot Engel's office. She spoke to Stephanie Kozma. She spoke to countless officials throughout the day in various departments on her phone, on her personal device, and it is clear uh, that in fact she was in possession of her phone and that this story is complete nonsense. And as I just mentioned, we now have tapes from her. This is straight from the horse's mouth, proving as much, and we plan to take action on it because what took place is a dastardly act and it will be actioned in court. Now, moving on, we talk about these tweets that came out Monday. And what I think it's important to remember is these may be new tweets from Merritt Corrigan, but these are not new beliefs. She's believed these same things her entire life. In fact, on July 22nd, CNN published a story about past tweets, about tweets that she published in 2019, where she espouses many of the same beliefs. She talks about a homo empire. She talks about the United States government being, as she puts it, taken over by LGBTQ activists. This is a story from CNN, it was published July 22nd, about tweets from 2019. So these tweets may be new, but the beliefs are not. The beliefs are very deeply seated, they're very old, and we're going to continue here, and you're going to see the entire timeline of our involvement with Ms. Corrigan, the nature of our relationship, we're going to lay it all out on the table, you're going to see it all. I would direct your attention to the television set because you're about to see some very interesting evidence. Now, Miss Corrigan was a young woman looking for love. She was on Bumble as recently as January 2020. Uh, these are not new photos. These are photos that were dug up by Right Wing Watch, an operation run by Jared Holt. She talks about her right wing beliefs on her Bumble profile. She says that her hero is Steve Bannon. She says that she wants to start a nationalist think tank. Woman looking for love. Nothing wrong with that. Now we continue. There's been this story that was read by Raheem Kassam that uh, I met Miss Corrigan just a month ago when I got to Washington, D.C., that we never knew each other. Well, this is nuts. You can see here in messages uh, her talking about us meeting for the very first time. She's concerned that perhaps she, as she puts it, comes across as a bimbo. Of course, I assured her that that fear is totally unfounded. I think I'm a very supportive, positive person. She is uh, clearly quite smitten with me. This is uh, back in March. This is March 8th. This is uh, a week or two after CPAC. 
and uh, clearly she likes what's happening. At this point, remember, she works at the Hungarian embassy. She does not work at USAID. Let's remember that. She continues. This is not a woman who's being forced to do anything, folks. That much is clear. She talks about how she's a Viktor Orban fangirl, loves Viktor Orban, loves nationalist politics. You know, there was a story that perhaps Merritt Corrigan didn't know who Elliot Engel was. This is something that was floated by Raheem Kassam and his defamatory lies that were spread throughout the media. Well, that's kind of crazy because she worked at the Hungarian embassy and she lobbied the House Foreign Affairs Committee. There was speculation by Politico that perhaps she should have filed a FARA disclosure, a Foreign Agent Registration Act disclosure. Here's a plane ticket. This is when Merritt was flown from Washington, D.C. to Miami, late March. And at this meeting in Miami, this is where Merritt received her offer finally. We tried our damnedest to get her an offer to work inside the administration. We thought that she would be the perfect person. And she didn't want to do it. She liked her gig at the Hungarian embassy. But I encouraged her. I said, this is a good move. You can do a lot for the country. You can do a lot to take down the people that we all agree should not be running US foreign policy, should not be holding LGBTQ rights as the end-all be-all for whether or not the United States provides AIDS to our allies. She talks about the chemistry we have. You can see, she's quite smitten. We go on. She talks about how she's not happy that I have, at the time, multiple girlfriends early on. She wasn't a fan of that. She is, again, and this brings me no pleasure to show these kind of messages. It's every bit as personal to me as I'm sure it is for her. But the important thing is to demonstrate here that this allegation of kidnapping is 100% false. Nobody forced Ms. Corrigan to do anything at any time, ever. She likes my arms, talks about that a lot. She's got this sort of complex. She doesn't think she's attractive enough. She talks about how she's just a normal girl. I'm supportive, I'm encouraging. Not an abusive relationship, not in a manipulative relationship, not in the least. You see her right-wing politics here. Now, of course, she's using hyperbole. She doesn't mean these things literally, I'm sure. But this is not the way that a left-wing person talks whose phone was hacked and uh, hijacked by a right-winger. This is not how they talk. She talks about the decline in IQ. Again, back to the arms. Now this is when I get to Washington DC. This is back on July, uh, this is July 7th or 8th. When I get back to Washington. First thing she wants to do is come see me. You can see on Instagram, she's quite happy uh, to be referred to as my girlfriend. She uh, is excited about my arms. This is a theme here. There comes a point where we perhaps decide not to move forward. I say, that's fine, Merritt. You don't have to move forward. But she insists that, in fact, we should. She messages me. I was already asleep at this point. Uh, but she is quite certain. She is quite obsequious in this message. You can see from the message that she is the one that is sure that she wants to pursue this. She wants to continue. Here's a picture right here at Project 1599 headquarters. Doesn't seem like a person who's been kidnapped, I can tell you that. And another, looking longingly into my eyes. Short video. I will uh, 
go back and play that one one more time. It's a short video, but I'll play it one more time for you. Clearly, this is not a victim, folks. This is a person who did a very brave thing and took on the deep state. She was threatened by Elliot Engel. She was threatened by members of the State Department, by people at the White House personnel office, and she got cold feet. That is all. This is a picture from the day of. This is a picture that was taken on Monday. You can see she's not kidnapped. She's not being held against her will. This is an amorous photo. This is a photo that uh, shows her affection, I think, and shows mine. Just, uh, just one second. I want to point out, uh, Merritt was terrified that the Secretary of State, Mr. Pompeo, would coordinate an effort to effectively destroy her career. She was terrified of this. Uh, this business of the watches, she told it to us many times, and it caused her great fear and many, many sleepless nights. So I, wanna, I don't let that go. Well, that's right. I, that's a good, a good point there. Uh, this is just one of many emails wherein Miss Corrigan, from her personal encrypted email, uh, sends us documents from inside USAID, privileged internal documents. She sent us a whole bunch. Of course, as you know, these documents made their way into the press. We were not responsible for that, I might add. These documents were relatively inconsequential, particularly relative to the other documents that she sent over the course of her tenure. But it's just one example, and there are many more, and we want to make very clear that for each and every allegation that we make, for each piece of evidence that we bring forth, we have a chain of custody as to where that evidence came from and the full provenance of the nature of that evidence. This is her op-ed for The Spectator. She was worried on Tuesday morning that uh, she wouldn't have time to write it. So I said, give me the general direction. I'll write the 700 words and I'll send it off to you to edit. Let me know if you need any changes. Of course, she was in contact with an editor at The Spectator named Amber Athey. She was excited about writing the op-ed, uh, but when I sent it off to her after she left to go get a new outfit from her apartment, she said, just go ahead and hold on it. Not, you son of a bitch, you kidnapped me. No, 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 she doesn't say that. She says, just hold on it. That's what she says. There's no kidnapping here, folks, and you can see that loud and clear. You know, on Tuesday morning, she was excited about coming to work here at the lobbying firm, J.M. Berkman and Associates. She set up her LinkedIn page. She added her various education. I didn't I had no idea how well educated she was. It turns out she has not one but two master's degrees. She studied all over the world. She speaks four languages. She worked at the RNC when I was just getting out of high school. This is a seasoned political veteran. This is not a stooge. This is not a bimbo. This is not a dumb person. This is a smart person who took on the deep state and unfortunately got cold feet. Unfortunately, couldn't stay the course. It's unfortunate. We're not happy to see it, but it's what happened. You know, I want to tell you, we have Project 1599 has spent an awful lot of time putting moles throughout the government. This is only the first of, of many that you will see. The first of many, even this year and on into next year, combating the deep state is our highest priority. And we plan to disrupt the functioning of government. You know, when you reach the point where the United States Department of State has as one of its main foreign policy objectives with the government of Russia or the government of Hungary, the government of the Czech Republic or Poland, uh, how they treat transsexuals, you know, you know that our country is in horrible trouble. Can you imagine the United States doing that 20 years ago, 40 years ago, 100 years ago, when we were sensible? No. And so the time has come. The time has come to fight back. All right, let's throw this open to questions. Uh, gentlemen, the floor is yours. Ford. I'm not sure I understand how you go from we had a relationship to, therefore I could never have possibly kidnapped her. Plenty of people are in domestic violence situations, whatever. Not, I, it doesn't look like any of that proof of your relationship 
would disprove that you could have possibly explored Well, Ford, again, the, the dispositive evidence is that Miss Corrigan was here throughout the entire day. She spoke to, and I'll name them again, she spoke to Zach Patrizzo, who I think I saw here in attendance. She spoke to Scott Greer, a uh, guy who flunked out of the Daily Caller. She spoke to Stephanie Kozma at the State Department. She spoke to numerous people. I could go down the list, I could keep naming them. She spoke to, after we left 1599 and we went to my residence, she, her mom called. I spoke to her mom at great length. Janelle, you call her mom and ask. We spoke for probably a half hour. Her mom was excited. She was thrilled that Merritt had finally come out as a true conservative and a true Christian. And she was proud of Merritt coming to join the lobbying firm. She couldn't have been happier. My dad called and Merritt spoke to, her, to him for a short period of time. Uh, as Jack has pointed out, there were relations that night of a physical nature. And so this whole idea about kidnapping uh, is dispositively false. And as I've shown you, the very next day, it was the same thing. It was nothing but it was nothing but love and happiness and butterflies and excitement to come work here at Berkman and Associates. The idea of a kidnapping, as is shown in tapes by Ms. Corrigan, and we'd be happy to let you in one at a time to listen to the tapes. It's, it's too much noise here to, to play the tapes. We're happy to let you listen. More than three hours of recorded phone calls. The tapes show exactly what happened. Raheem Kassam started this lie that Miss Corrigan was kidnapped. She says on the call, I didn't say that, he said it. He said it to reporters. I didn't say it, Jacob. That's what she says. So this idea of kidnapping is completely and utterly spurious. It's false. It, is, has, it has zero basis, in fact. Again, not to be too graphic, and the last thing Jacob and I want here is to be salacious, but when there are physical relations, uh, she's here Monday, there are physical relations throughout Monday, and then even on Tuesday, uh, after the day on which the alleged kidnapping occurred, I think, Ford, you have all the evidence you need that this has devolved into farce. I can't imagine that there's more evidence you need. All right, any other questions? To someone who's watching this, it sounds like you're just slut shaming her and saying she couldn't have possibly been the no, victim. No, because, because Ford, there exactly couldn't be there couldn't be anything further. There's there's I don't know. You use this term. I don't want to repeat it. Uh, something shaming, blank shaming. No such thing here. No such thing. That's not what's happening at all. Back there. Now, what is the status of your uh, legal proceedings in California? I'm not sure. I'll have to get back to you on that. No, no, we've not been... No, I'm not aware of that. And as I said, in the past, uh, well, in the past 15 hours or so, I've spent more than three hours on the phone with Merritt, and uh, she is deeply regretful that, that Raheem Kassam took it upon himself to spread this horrible lie that she was kidnapped. She's deeply disappointed. If she feels that way, why isn't she publicly saying it? Darla Shine, have you been in contact with her? Darla Shine? Uh, Bill Shine's wife? Not that I can recall. What, why isn't she going public to take back her statement if you're saying that she now doesn't want that out there? Why, why are you saying it for her? Well, she's terribly shaken up. It's been a turbulent week for Merritt, and uh, we encourage her to come here to take to the podium. Uh, we encourage that numerous times, as you can hear in these phone calls. Um, and she just uh, she just wasn't up for it. Do you she think doesn't she have the approves energy. of this? She approves of you showing off her. Your I'm not sure. With her and not sure. Can't say. You didn't ask her. I'm not sure. Anything else here? Any other questions, gentlemen? Yeah. Anything further? Zach, you have another one. Uh, your current status, the DC bar, Mr. Berkman. Are you still a lawyer, or what's going on there? I'm a lawyer. Uh, what's as far as I know. Of course. What do you mean legit? What do you mean legit? Sure, of course. You bet. All right. We'll have uh, we'll have one one last question here.
uh, for anyone uh, anyone who wants to ask one last question before we wrap have, here. Have you retained counsel in this case in case you were criminally charged with kidnapping? Oh, we know there's like going to be no criminal charges because there's no evidence of any criminality. Let me uh, let me just add, you know, for I want to I want to not to put too fine a point on this, but did you hear what I said? You, you, there's an there's an allegation of kidnapping on Monday. On Tuesday, this girl and Jacob have sexual relations. Did you hear that? I mean, do you understand that this is are we are we in the same planet? I want to make sure you heard that. You're a lawyer. I don't I don't think any lawyer would seriously contend that that sex after some crime means that the aforementioned it, 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 in the case in the case of kidnapping it would. And there are many other things. On Monday she enjoyed a wonderful sushi dinner here. Uh, she was relaxed. She left the home many times. It's crazy. You know, Ford, I I, I would encourage you and I would encourage all journalists to uh, call Miss Corrigan's mother. Ask her about the in-depth conversation that we had Monday night, uh, and ask her all about that. And as I'm sure Jack agrees, we welcome investigations of all and any kinds. Our, we're an open door. We're an open book. We have all kinds of information. Uh, but of course, we don't anticipate any investigations because there was no crime. There was no kidnapping, of course. And as I mentioned, and as we have on tapes. As recently as three hours ago, we have Miss Corrigan admitting that, it, in fact, Raheem Kassam synthesized this lie out of whole cloth. Why don't you play? Play the tape. Come on in. Come on in. We'll play the tapes. It's, it, there's too much noise here. We've got music. No, come on in. We'll play the tapes. I, they're right on my laptop. We've got some disturbances here with our friends. We've got some disturbances. You're welcome to come in and listen to the tapes. All right. Well, I'll, uh, we'll proceed to that part of the press conference, I suppose. Thank you, gentlemen. And uh, thank you so much. Can Zach and I come in, like now? You're not going to let us record the recording? No, I'm going to let you record the recording. I just, when you walk into the house, I'm asking that you don't record it. Oh, like the, like the process of walking into yes, the house? Yes, yes. All right, fine. I will. Cease recording. Yeah, oh, come on in. in. Right here. Just play in the garage. Virus is fake, guys. <laughs> Regardless, just play in the garage. Okay, right let's see. Let's spread out. But, but yeah. guys, I'm going to ask you not to record the tape yeah. for sake of privacy. But I'm going to play it for you. If you want to hear it, you can't record. I'm just, that's the rule that we're laying down. and. I'm happy to play it how, for you. How does that time. prove anything? I mean, to the people because who are... Because are you a journalist? Are you able to report on things that you've seen and heard or not? Yeah, but everything that I do is about people being able to see it. Well, well, well I want you... Uh, listen, the cameras and I, phones I, come on in. Yeah, I just got... There's a pandemic. Okay, right, we'll take one at a time. How about that? One at a time. Let's no, just show it here in the garage. How about we put the phones down and the cameras aside? Well, then just play it here. You guys... It says it's up. Excuse me. Why don't we do this, guys? If you don't mind, let's put the phones down, cameras aside, and then we're happy to. How about that? Want to do that? No. You guys? I, I really, we're having a little bit of a camera. Uh, we'll just spit out the tape. We'll tweet it out, guys. We'll tweet it out. Thank you, guys. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll tweet out the tape, then. If you don't want to listen, last call if anyone wants to listen to the tape. You guys will tweet it out when we tweet it out. Well, we don't have Twitter, so it'll be tough. We, we've been shut down on social media, yeah, but we'll get it out. We'll get it out on Telegram. That's what you expected. Um, in the next, uh, I guess, six minutes? Next six minutes. If it's not on Telegram in six minutes. Yes, am I telling it's, it's t. It's t.me, yeah. t.me slash Jacob A. Wolf. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, you, so you had a conversation with I, Mary. This two hours last night and one hour tonight. Sure. What, what was she saying, Jacob? What? Well, well, I mean, what, what was she saying? Well, she was, she was mostly personal in nature, and, you know, I don't want to disclose more than necessary as it relates to personal stuff, but... You know, the important takeaway was that this lie about kidnapping was made up out of whole cloth, and she named the person who made it up. His name is Raheem Kassam, works for Steve Bannon. 
Okay, you, you just spent the entire press conference posting screenshots of, of her Again, complimenting guys, your I arms mean, and talking about having sex you know with you. All right, how, guys, how can you then say that this, I'm put out the tape. that her Again, saying you didn't do anything wrong is just fine? What is your question for? Well, so, okay, okay, yeah. Excuse me, Corey, what is your question? Just like Hunter Kelly. Hold on. The essence of your press conference was look at how nice our relationship is. We have documentation of this nice relationship. What's your question? That was very personal. How is her saying... No, Jacob, you didn't kidnap Because we don't want the tape personal? to be, we don't, we want you to listen to the tape before we put it out. It's evidentiary nature and upcoming litigation. You, you, you don't want the tape that's going to exonerate you online? I, I We're going to put it online, but. the call log on the phone establishing that she did. Do you want to see the call log? Sure. Well, let's sure. show we'll, we'll take whatever yeah, you're going to show I think that'll put your mind at ease. Let me show you, let me show you. see the time and the call You know, I don't want to, I don't want to show her number on there. Yeah, well, that's fine. Cover her phone. I don't want to publish anybody's We'll show you the call. I think that'll. Put your mind at ease. Okay. Um, so this is this is yesterday. Um, I don't know. Just just so, so you don't see her her number here. Co yeah, cover um, her number with your hand. Whatever. If I touch it, is it going to? No, it won't. No, this is a call coming after this, this incoming alleged ridiculous kidnapping. Remember 10 40 that. 10:40 p.m. One hour. 48 minutes. That's all how, you how, how do we say. know that's her number? You could have just created that contact. No, no, let it's her number. number. Do you want it? But you, I don't want you to show the okay, number. Okay, let me okay. see Give the number. number. Do you want to see that? Do you want to see it? Yeah, but, okay. but please. I, I, I'm not going to look. Okay, come here. I'm not going to film the number. Ready? Let's actually Ready? be socially sure. distant. There you go. You can verify it. That's her number. It's her number. And then I called her back. I said I got to use the restroom, and I called. Let me see the other one. And then there's a call from this morning. Outgoing call, 9 minutes, 12.31 a.m. Wait, so then go there more this morning as well? Yeah, yeah we agreed to talk more at 8.45 a.m. Um, I mean, what else do you need? This is an alleged kidnapping on Monday calls on Tuesday night for two hours. Come on. I mean, come on. I mean, what do you want to see? It's, I mean, there's not much to say. This is, eight, this is eight, you want to see 8.45 a.m.? Sure, I mean, if you... Here's 8.45 eight well, I a.m. Mean, come on now. This is this morning. Imagine if you were the Today, prosecutor with this case. Are, are you covering the phone? I'll, I'll take a shot that, of it. But, but, but that's not, know. Jacob. Let me tell you something. That's not the number that you claimed that. We'll call it. That was her that's her number. All right. No, why don't you call it? See. Verify the. That is her number. Call call why don't you call her? Call her. Well, Vera. you want to call her? That's her phone number. Verify. Call it and see, Jacob. Zach, if you want to, this is not the hill to die on. That is her phone number. Okay. Call. Take it from I'll me. Check it out. Call it and see. You guys call the number. We gave you the number. Call it, see, and you'll be happy. What about legal concerns in California? Are you worried about any of those? Not whatsoever. No. I mean, prison. Not. Not concerned. Not at all. I have zero legal concerns. What about you, Mr. Berkman? I mean, your lobbying firm, it seems like you're working with some shell companies and moving money. What do you mean by shell? What, what do you mean by shell? Shell companies, companies that don't exist. Yes, that's true. No, no so true. each one of your clients you stand by? Sure. Okay. No. All right, guys, I'm going to get to uh, putting out this small section of the tape. As I mentioned, there's more like than. Like you said, in six minutes, correct? Yep, we're going to go upstairs. We're going to go right upstairs, clip it, and. Uh, and uh, do you think she's she's gonna say this is authentic? Whatever it is. Of course. That you oh, you wouldn't. Yeah. You'll have no issue with that. You don't have any issue. You'll you'll you'll. Of course, it's authentic. authentic. You'll have no issues with that. Yep. All right. We look forward right. to seeing. And you know what? If I can find more excerpts, if I can even get more excerpts than that, I'll find them. Thank you for coming. And uh, t.me slash Jacob A. Wool. Do you do you still think that Joe Scorbo recording was real? By the way. Yes. We do. I do think that's very much so. Because I mean, after you listen, actually posted listen, it, you're gonna hear this, it closely. Gonna, it was so obvious. No, you're going to hear this tape. You're going to hear this tape. This, it's gonna blow this you one's away. the real thing. You're going to hear the this Joe thing was the real thing. This too. is going to blow you away. Again, I invite right. you in to listen for it, but I just can't. I don't want cameras all around the house. There's, there's, uh -huh. We have documents and such lying around. And you can't play it out here either, um, because it's evidentiary. Uh, yes. Just, uh, yes. Exactly. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay.